Today on another heart-pounding episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. What do you do when you're alone at home? And suddenly you realize there is someone or something else lingering up the stairs. Thoughts of an intruder may run through your mind until you accept the harsh reality that whatever is lurking above you is simply not of this world. Tonight we hear how one young woman handled this terrifying situation on another creep malicious episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs> Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855 853 4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. And yep, Robert did say creepalicious. <laughs> you know, it's just, he's he's uh, he's a man of the times. He truly, truly is. Ghost Stories Online. Damn right I said creepalicious. See, he's... Uh, <laughs> Don't fuck with me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, welcome to the program. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person and EPP, son, epicghostpodcast.com. Get access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes of the show. They're all commercial free. There's literally thousands of them for you to binge away on right away. Uh, like I said, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to get in on all of that. The world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. That, that's like a... That's a goal right there. You set the goal. I'm going to listen to every ghost story in the world's largest uh, audio archive of ghost stories. You know, do that. If just, you know, don't work for a year. <laughs> you know, just, just sit at home and listen to ghost stories. No one will care. Your family will love you. They'll think you're normal. It's fine. What's going on, Carol? <clears throat> just sitting here being normal, you know, yeah. listening to some ghost stories. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm doing. You know, and the funny thing is, I don't know. I've been on a lot of episodes. Mm-hmm. And I, like, there's a zillion I haven't heard. And I am on this podcast. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But there's been a couple people who have reached out and said, I've listened to all of the episodes. I'm like, have you really? Like, I know. I hear lot. that a lot. And it's like, I, and, and I think they truly think they have, or they, that they believe they have, but they don't realize um, just how many there actually are. There's a lot. Yeah. You if, keep quite busy, my friend. Yeah, I was counting it out the other day. I think I make like, what is it, like 13 to 15 episodes a week, kind of depending. Sometimes sometimes a bit more. It doesn't usually go down from that, but it can go up from that, depending on how many interviews I do in a week um, with the yeah, Grave really. Dogs. Yeah. That's a lot. It is. But and then like, I, I know it. And in October, you did extra stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, it's I. It, I don't look at it as that difficult because it's like you're sitting down for the most part, and I'm talking to somebody for an hour. It's not really like work, work. <laughs> it, well, it's it, it's you got to stay you on ain't top of it. Any ditches? It's, yeah, I mean, it could be much worse. I mean, then I mean, I do all the behind the the scenes stuff behind that. I mean, there's hours upon hours every week of just curating the shows, putting them together, graphics, getting everything online, running the back end of everything, which that is probably... That's the work part. That's probably about 50% of what I do now. Uh, if not, maybe you know, 50, 60% of what I do. 40% is on air. Um, the rest is, you know, uh, that sort of stuff. But you know, it's, 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 you know, it, it is what it is. There's work involved with anything. And uh, I don't know. I love doing it, so I can't complain. <laughs> it's It's fun. Um, yeah, uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's, uh, let's jump over to a quick call here at the beginning of the show and hear your ghost story. Hi. Hi, Tony and uh, everybody. Uh, long time listener, first time caller, you've heard the drill. Um, this isn't really my story, but my mother's, but, uh. I think it's something I think she would like me to share. Um, my dad, a former past, a pastor, uh, died the 13th of January this year, 70 years old. He just dropped dead. And uh, my mom woke up to him to find out that he had passed away. She did 
fresh new breathing form, everything. And she was struggling soon after that. And the she got visited by one of her favorite birds, a male cardinal, the day after. Now, in some cultures, birds can be considered messengers from the dead, cardinals especially. Since my dad was a pastor, we figured it was him because a cardinal is a high-level priest. So we think every day when we see a red cardinal these days because we think it's my dad coming to visit to watch over us just to tell us that he's okay. Well, guys, keep up the good work, and uh, we'll keep listening to your show. Some of your stories are very spooky and very uh, interesting, and I love the show. That's why I become an EPP. All right. Thank you for uh, sharing your stories and uh, supporting the show by being uh, an EPP. Cardinal story for you there. You know how I feel about those kind of stories. Like, I think that's... There's so many, like, mines with pennies, but there's so many people who cardinal is their sign. Yeah. And 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 he's right. It's I think they it's the male cardinal because the male one's the real pretty red one. Because mm-hmm. I think you might not even realize the female cardinals are cardinals sometimes. <laughs> it is hard sometimes. Yeah. Bless our little heart. But um, but I totally, you know, there are just so many people I know who have had cardinals show up. Mm-hmm. There was a video recently where. I think they were at a grave site and this cardinal flew. It was like two middle-aged women and the cardinal like flew down like right next to him and the woman puts out her hand and the cardinal sits on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, maybe somebody made that video, but it really looked like just a phone video sort of thing. And I like to think it was real. I bet I could get that to happen here because I have, this is interesting and I'm, I'm just, um, thinking of this right now i have never seen so many damn cardinals in my life but here on this my farm here my seven acres we uh, there's flocks of cardinals i'm not even kidding Uh, every day i go to my truck there's one on each side and i'm not being sarcastic here making a joke there's one on each of my mirrors and yes you can tell they've been there uh (laughs) I, i have to wash the truck like twice a week because that's where they hang out. And I go out in the morning. I, I honestly, I say, hey, good morning, guys. And then they fly away. Um, and then, you know, they're back out there as soon as I go into my office. Um, but it's a daily thing. I say hello to my cardinals. When I go back out behind my barn, I think that's where a lot of the family lives. I think it's there. It, it's like a very extended family of them uh, because there's probably 30, 40 cardinals back there. Um, male, female, and they, you know, it's just tons of them. They're everywhere. But that being said, um, I've never seen this many before like this. Is it because I do the ghost show? Do the birds, do they know it? And they're like, we like this place. Well, I do it, but not at the level you do it. And I have cardinals in my backyard all the time. It's like more than I've noticed ever before. And, so proportionately, yeah. I just do two ghost episodes a week, so I just have a couple. You have all of them. Well, I don't think, yeah, but, but I, I think it's just, you know, it's not necessarily the amount of shows, but it's it's the, I don't know, maybe this is completely crazy talk. <laughs> now, but to, like for me, I think cardinals are gorgeous. Like that yeah. color is so beautiful. Like I love looking at them. I love it when I see them in my backyard, Mm -hmm. but I don't have that connection. Like I don't feel like there's a a message or something, but you know, dang, I find a penny. I get all kinds of excited. I've had weird bird stuff. I think just people have their, their own connection to someone who's passed and it could be a bird or a penny or whatever, a feather. A lot of people are like that with feathers. I think I got the zombie cardinals. I think it's like it's the it's this whole group of folks that are hanging out as cardinals. Like, you know, I, I've had so many weird bird things here. I, I've had cardinals and they're all over the place. But I've had a bird fly into my house twice in the last year. 
like inside the house, like, oops, in through the door. I've never had that happen. And I've lived in much How? in much more wooded areas Did than this. Did you leave your door open or something? No. I mean, it's like literally walking into the house, doors open, boom, bird. It's like the cat trying to get up, but a bird trying to get in. And it's it happened Christmas Day of um, not not this Christmas, but the previous Christmas. Christmas night, it did on the 25th. And... It was the it was me and my parents and and Harper. Um, it was just us, and all of a sudden, like, oh my god, there's a bird in the house, and I was chasing it down, and I got it um, in a, a net, so I I didn't hurt it, so I could get him out safely. But that was it was almost like Christmas vacation ish, you know, with the squirrel. Um, uh, got him out though, um, and then there was another case. I would say about. I don't know, six months later, it was, I think, spring of this year um, that it's so we it was literally opening the door and then the bird flies in the house. And it was the same sort of deal. Got it out with a net just fine. But we don't have many large trees right next to our house, though, either. Like there's the tree line way over. But I've lived in areas that were like completely wooded, like I was in the forest and I never had birds flying into my house. It, That's I, so crazy. It's, weird. it's happened to me before, but I had a door open. Sure. I was asking for it. Yeah, I mean, if you just keep it wide open, I get that. But it's like, it's just like quick, you know, like, what are they? I don't know. I, I was at, at first when it went down, I was kind of scared because it almost felt like a weird omen of some sort because there was a lot of literally not good things going on at that moment in time. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and it was it was just like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It was actually, I think in your case that was a good omen. Yeah, that you thought was a bad omen. It was a good omen. Yeah, because things got better. No, you're right. You're right. They did, but at the moment it was kind of like this is weird. <laughs> like this is the shit. I, <laughs> this is like the beginning of someone's story on the show. <laughs> like, and I don't really want to think of my Christmas evening as the beginning of one of the stories on the show. <laughs> like. I think I did have a panic attack that night too, which was fun. Yeah, it was, it was like the first time I ever had one too, and and nothing to do with the bird. <laughs> it was just, it was a little bit later after that, and uh, I was just sitting there and I was calm, and all of a sudden I'm like, "What the hell's going on?" I thought I was having like a stroke or something, but um, that was the worst one I'd ever had. I ended up learning I had it, I or learning what it was, so I recognized it a few other times, but never that. I think the first time can be the scariest, isn't it? Yeah, I've had a few. Because after don't know I what got the, fired, I yeah. I was having panic attacks because yeah. I and it, it would wake me up in the middle of the night. Yeah, and my heart would just be racing. I couldn't get a breath. I like what's the matter? What's the matter? Yeah, and then I would go, "You don't have a job." <laughs> <laughs> and then when I think that, I'd be like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, it just get worse. Now, can you imagine if you created a TikTok channel at that time and you just started putting those on TikTok every time? You could have like millions of followers. Yeah, people would love that. I wonder if that girl's having another panic attack. <laughs> people, it's, it's the most random, crazy thing to put on there. They're like, yep, Carol with the panic attacks. <laughs> like, it's funny. I can post the, um, like, I like I could maybe take a super great picture of me doing something really exciting mm -hmm. and put it on Instagram and like, maybe I'll get a hundred likes. I, I post an adorable picture of my dog and mm -hmm. it's like 6,000 likes Yeah, because he's so cute. So he's got to like get, get like <laughs> clip art of him and just insert him into every picture, no matter what. Right? It's like, whatever I'm doing, here's my dog. Oh my God. <laughs> Like your it, dog is so cute, but look at the amazing thing I'm doing. But your dog is so cute. It doesn't matter that the, it's, he's like out of like the frame makes no sense where he's located in the size of the dog, but he's in the picture. <laughs> it's like he's overlapping everything. Yes, but he's in the picture. Yeah, it's funny. I realized a lot of people follow senior dogs on Instagram. I guess it's those of us who have them mm -hmm. follow each other. I don't know what the deal is. Senior dog addiction on the next <laughs> Toroldo. Uh, That's what it is. 855 uh, 853 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a letter. It says, I've always had a deep fascination for the paranormal, from cryptozoology to 
UFOs. I go to my library when I was a kid to read books on true encounters. Some of my family members also claim to have seen strange things. When my dad was a kid, he said he woke up a couple of times to see a full-bodied apparition with no feet looking through the clothes in his closet. There was also a room in my grandparents' house that multiple people had encounters in. My mom said an arm grabbed her from the window when she was young. Another time, my brother and cousin were sleeping over there, and he said an extremely bright light lit up the entire room and vanished when they lowered the covers from over their heads. I didn't get so lucky to experience anything until I was in high school. We had a friend whose house was supposedly haunted, and they were very comfortable and open about talking about it. They even said it was a little boy named Simon. My first encounter was after school one day. Went there to hang out for a little bit before going to my girlfriend's house who lived down the street. Being very interested in the phenomena, I asked him about the ghost. He said, oh yeah, watch this. If I go down the basement stairs, he likes to close the door on me. So opens the door. I was walking downstairs. And I watched as the door slowly started closing behind him and shut completely. I reopened the door and checked it out, top to bottom, and I couldn't get it to completely close myself without using some force. At the time, a bunch of us were there playing with Nerf guns. It would turn the lights off in the whole house and kind of hide and either shoot or get shot. It was all in fun until one of the girls started freaking out. She was passing by the stairs, saw someone standing on them, shot at them, and then watched the Nerf dart go right through the person disappeared. Needless to say, it was a game over after that. Most of the significant experience happened another night. His mom and stepdad were away on vacation. He worked at McDonald's not too far away and told a few of us to go there without him until he got home from work. We were out just kind of chilling at the downstairs watching TV. All of a sudden, we start hearing heavy footsteps upstairs and a door open and close, automatically assuming it was his stepsister, who would also our age. I shouted up, Hey, it's Rick, your brother knows uh, we're here. He'll be home soon. No answer. We didn't give it a second thought and went back to watching TV. Again, we hear it. it sounded almost like a cat chasing something, followed again by one or two doors opening and closing. I looked at my friends again and said, She's probably coming down now. Ten minutes later, the front door opens and it's his stepsister and her friend. I look at her confused and say, um, we thought you were upstairs. We heard a bunch of stuff up there. She nonchalantly says, oh yeah, that was just Simon. End of story. So the sister knows what's going on and she's just kind of letting him know. Yeah, no big deal. No, and I totally get that. Yeah. Because I remember when I was a kid feeling the same way, but it was more like, uh... Because I didn't want to have a ghost in my house. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever fully accepted it. Mm -hmm. So maybe she did it more like, oh, it's Simon. Simon. Yeah. But that's, you know, because that's the kind of stuff like you're just hanging out and it's like, oh, there's somebody upstairs. Yeah. You know, you don't think anything about it. Well, that's kind of weird. Oh. Must but, be her. Yeah, I mean, as long and as it's she like... she comes in, then it's like, what was I hearing? Yeah. When it's at least plausible that there's... An, and likely it's, you know, a family member or something. It's not an intruder. It's like, okay, whatever. You know, somebody got home early or whatever. And maybe in their house they just learned to live with it. I mm -hmm. mean, it was like the ghost did party tricks. It's like, watch this. I'm going to walk downstairs and he'll shut the door behind me. Yeah. You know, that's kind of good for a party trick. It is. But it kind of sounds like maybe they coexisted I think they okay kinda, together. I think they found their peace with each other. Because, yeah. you know, in some cases it's like, look, you're not that bad. We're okay. It's, it's not worth moving over, you know. And it's like respect you. Yeah. You know, I. but you got to respect us. Don't go moving shit. Yeah. Don't go walking around. Don't go turn yeah. it into Satan, you know. There's that. That sort of stuff. Don't eat the cat. Don't make, you know. <laughs> Don't eat the cat. <laughs> My God, please. Don't do that. Wake up in the morning, the cat's <sighs> half in the toaster, half in the blender. <laughs> Great. Now I'm going to dream about that. Yep. 
It's like, what happened? It was the, we agreed you wouldn't kill the cats. <laughs> we had an agreement. This relationship is over. <laughs> and I'm taking my you, cat I parts with you me. Out. <laughs> Snuckles. Come here, Snuckles. Oh my like, God. I'm going to, I'm going to the store and I'm getting some sage <laughs> and you're gone. Oh no, this you, shit long enough. oh no, you didn't. <laughs> I did. he come back in like a like a crazy woman, lighting the damn sage. <laughs> what happens? And blaring uh, Carrie Underwood uh, uh, before he cheats. Before he cheats. Yeah. <laughs> and I saved the shit out of that haunted house. <laughs> Pulled the cat out of the toaster. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, very plausible idea. Uh, let's... Before he creeps. <laughs> Before he creeps. Now. There we go. I like it. Or you can, of course, do TLC creep too. So I creep. Yeah, just keep it on the down low. All right, let's go to this one. It says, uh, I'll start out by saying I was adopted from a uh, peasant village in East Romania just after the uh, expulsion of uh, one of the leaders. And brought here to the States at uh, three months old. One of my earliest memories is lying in a wooden crib next to a window. There's something very large outside my window, and I know it sounds odd. Maybe it's how babies think. It made me hungry. I know now I was looking at the moon, but then I looked, and then it looked edible. Bizarre, I know. I remember this because of what happened next. It scared the crap out of me. The moon grinned and opened its eyes at me. I just remember extraordinary fear. Years later, I asked my dad when I was in a crib by a window, and he said yeah, that was right after they had picked me up at the airport as a baby. It was a dream. Why do I remember it so well? And at three months old, makes me wonder if my baby self didn't realize it was just something standing on the other side of the window. I don't know. Growing up, I'd have fits of delirium during naps, freak out everybody. It wasn't sleepwalking because I was aware of everything. I would hear what would sound like a thousand voices saying the name of things over and over and visibly see brightly colored rings bouncing around the room. I could never figure out what it was saying because there were too many voices to really pick out at any coherent word. My brother told me one time I was crawling up the stairs in great distress and couldn't understand what I was saying. That all stopped when I hit puberty. After that, there have been minor things while in bed. I heard a deep male laughter from one of my windows. Woken up seconds before and looked around in the dark. When I heard it, I, of course, buried myself in my covers, more stunned than scared, and just fell back asleep. One time a babysitter told my parents how I had walked upstairs and told her I needed to make an important phone call and then just stared at her. She got scared and told me to go get the phone then, but I just kept staring until she put me back to bed. I don't remember doing that. My teenage years are pretty quiet. Till I hit the road when I was 19, ending up at a rainbow gathering, which my first story I sent in was about. Up until this incident, all the rest were when I was sleeping or in bed. So this is always a story I tell people when ghosts are being talked about because I was 100% awake and aware. Pennsylvania, 2010. Ended up at this huge national festival, basically reminiscent of the hippie subculture back in the day. A lot of travelers, wanderers, drifters, train hoppers, Annual gathering in a different national park. I lucked out and meeting up with some old travel companions and the three of us pitched camp purposefully away from the main encampment. We chose a spot along the main trail heading down into the gathering so our backs were to miles of empty woods. It was dusk and it was just me and Anna and just sitting by the fire thinking about getting food down below. We stood up and I proceeded to stomp out the fire. She was rummaging through her stuff. At the same time, a group of people were heading down the trail to the main camp. They were a hundred yards below us when Anna stopped and just looked at me saying, Do you hear that? I listened and heard what sounded to be like walking, coming from behind us, but kind of below us, too. The people on the trail had stopped, but were oblivious to the sound. They were just taking a break and talking. The way Anna was acting made me start to feel weird about the sound because it was getting closer and finally, it was close enough. We knew we should be seeing it. Whatever it was, it walked right up to the people on the trail below us. We never saw a thing, but could see and hear the steps it made. 
we could see the indent of feet and twigs and leaves being kicked up. It was kind of like a child walking fast. That's how it sounded. It never stopped when it got up to them, just kind of slowed down as if checking them out, then veered off and came right towards us. Anna was struggling with her keychain, and I was just standing there, confused, I guess. Whatever it was, quickly paced within five feet of our fire pit, and was taking really slow steps as if to check us out. That's when Anna managed to get her little flashlight on her keychain to come on and say, Hey! This thing just took off uphill. Just like the sound of someone running. There would have been no way for me to run after it. We both just flew down the trail the opposite direction to find our third companion. We moved camp right after that, but later we did hear of more people having heard the invisible people in the woods from third parties. That's never left me. Never made any sense. Unless there's a type of squirrel that can travel underneath the forest floors at very high speeds. I have no idea. More recently, I'm 23 now, I was cleaning my room the other night and heard three loud knocks on the window. Thinking it was one of my friends, I ran outside to see no one. I recreated the sound. It was indeed knocking on my window. A distinct sound because you have to knock hard enough to hit through the screen to hit the glass. Now, that I work at a funeral home on a removal team. I do funerals and rosaries too, but mainly I pick up deceased persons from residents and, nursery, uh, and nursing homes. I've seen a lot of odd things at work. Maybe I'll leave those stories for another time because that's a different ball game entirely. Thanks for everything you do. Mike. P.S. I've gone back to Romania and I found my mother. She has an interesting story to tell about the circumstances of my birth and other paranormal incidents over there. There you go. That's a, another haunting one. What an interesting story story yeah like all of it and then you got about two-thirds of the way through or more 75 percent i don't know mm -hmm. and i'm like going you know this person i think is just super super sensitive and then he goes on to work in a nurse or in a funeral home and he's the guy out picking up the dead bodies mm -hmm. i'm wondering if that's a really good profession for someone like that or maybe you like having that connection mm -hmm. but i'm like you're too sensitive for that yeah <laughs> like this shit's always gonna be around you and i think that there are people it doesn't matter that they're always gonna have that you know you can't get away from it mm -hmm. and maybe in his case that's you know no matter what there's gonna be people knocking on him or haunting them in a forest mm -hmm. but i don't know it just seems like in a profession like that it's just that you're just adding to it almost I just i worry yeah you know is that the right profession for you or exactly you know should you go into restaurant management and stuff? <laughs> might be a better I mean, choice i mean it's a different sort of pressure yeah yeah but i i don't know I just thought that was interesting because just when I was thinking that, man, this person is super sensitive and then boom, this is what I do for a living. Yeah. I don't know. Might not be the best option. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? No, I mean, it's just a matter of like, can you handle it would be the, the biggest question. And if the answer is no, then you got to be like, well, you know, this might not be, you know, the right, uh, the right fit. Otherwise, I mean, even if you think you can handle it for a little while. I guess knowing when to call it quits is it would be important as well. And maybe, you know, someone like that, it's like you're drawn to it. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, it, it, it works the opposite way, too. You know, it's it just it's. Yeah. Let's go to one more caller. Hi. Let's hear your ghost story. Hi, Good. guys. Um, this actually started. It's a very well-known department store. It's actually quite large and you can locate them across Canada, across the U.S., and probably globally as well. Um, it's an amalgamation of a bunch of stories that don't work there anymore, thankfully. Um, I've had situations where I've had people run through our receiving bay, out the emergency exit door, only to see a 16-foot wall as they're trying to run away from security and not getting very far. Um, I've had people who have decided to go into the men's and women's washroom and use feces as paint 
I've had one woman go into the sports section and decide that she wanted to urinate on the floor. Um, I've also had one woman who was notorious for coming in and buying borderline skids worth of mouthwash um, that had a low alcohol content. Uh, she was known to be banned from our local liquor stores, uh, so she would go and buy them in bulk to get drunk off of the mouthwash. Uh, I've also had a gentleman that apparently seemed to have some kind of issue with their groinal area to the point where he was quite obviously in public catching out with his wife so hard that I fear that he was going to pull it off. Um, that's just the name of a few things. Um, I have had situations where people have followed and harassed me outside the store, uh, tried to proposition me for other things. Um, it's very short and sweet and to the point. But if you knew the company that I work for, um, or I did work for, it would be not that big of a surprise. Um, yeah. Okay. I guess where's the ghost? <laughs> but... I mean, it's a creepy story, but it was... <laughs> It wasn't even a story. There was no beginning, middle, or end. It was a rant. <laughs> it was like, I mean, it, I feel bad for her. I mean, it sounds like a horrible job, but um, yeah. Maybe she thought she was <clears throat> calling into the office, office horror stories. stories. I wonder if that was it. That might have been it. Well, a horror story nonetheless, and a quick one to, uh, to wrap up the show. But <laughs> <laughs> That was weird. I was I hoping because... What is she talking about? Because I, I, I was like, okay, we're going to get like, and then it's like, and they're all practicing Satanism in the break room. You know, <laughs> where are we going to go with this? But uh, I'm guessing that might have been what it was. Or she completely just lost her train of thought. <laughs> thinking, oh, yeah, there was supposed to be a ghost in there. <laughs> well, because sometimes you get, you know, you're telling the story. I've done and it. You get, it's like, yeah. next thing you know, I'm remembering how bad I hated that place. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, yeah, there was the ghost thing. But shit, I hung up. Yeah, that's. uh, (laughs) (laughs) It happens. There you go. You can relate to that. I uh, I think it happens to me at least once a week when I'm uh, just talking, you know, with Harper or something. It's like I'm trying to, like, make some dad point. And then it's like we get talking. Like, but what about this? And it's like, I don't even know what I was talking about to begin with. I don't remember. Because she starts, like, asking 42 questions and then trying to derail me. (laughs) It's like, ah. You derailed me 10 minutes ago. Stop. I know. Yeah. But dad. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all of the bonus episodes, the advanced episodes, all of it's commercial free and you help keep this ship afloat. Until next time, for Carol and all of us at Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening. 